Hi everyone, I hope everyone is doing well. So today we are going to be diving a bit deeper into heat. In the, in the last video, you spent some time learning about the difference between heat and temperature, and you found out that temperature is really just how fast those particles are moving, or in other words, the kinetic energy of those particles how fast they're moving. And this can be measured with a thermometer, which I'm sure you've experienced many times before. But how is this different than heat? What makes up heat? We know temperature is one of these things, but what else? How else does it differ from temperature? So let's first look at these two containers of water. Are they at the same temperature? I hope you're screaming, yes, absolutely, because yes, they're both at 100 degrees Celsius. The particles in both of these containers of water are moving at the same speed, making them the same temperature. But are these two samples the same? They are not. One of them has more heat. But how do we know which one has more heat? If I were to ask you which one of these containers, they're not on the stove anymore, I heated them both up to 100 degrees Celsius, good to go, would it be container A or B, which could melt more ice cubes? Hopefully, you chose B because there's so much more hot water in there, right? It would be able to melt a lot more ice. If we want a formal definition, heat is the total energy of all of the particles within a sample. Temperature is definitely included in heat, but it is not solely made up of temperature. Heat has a couple of other things. And today, we're going to figure out what these other um, factors involved in heat really are. So if we look at these two samples, we can see that they're at the same temperature, as shown in the thermometer reading. But these two samples are at different energies. The thermometer, as you can see, is measuring this area in the dotted black line. Same amount of area in both of these containers, and also the same temperature. But a thermometer doesn't know how much space or how much mass is within this huge container versus this small container. That's why we have this other measure of heat to be able to take into account some other factors of the substance that we're measuring. So we have three factors that affect heat. One, of course, we know is the temperature. How fast are the particles moving within um, the substance that we're looking at? The big difference here, and also the big difference up here, was the amount of substance. Yes, they were at the same temperature, and once again down here, they were at the same temperature as measured by the thermometer, but the amount was much different. We call this the mass. So these are two of the three factors that affect heat. And I think these are pretty self-explanatory, especially when looking at the images above, but there's a third factor that affects heat that might take a little bit more digging on our end. So let's look at a little experiment. What we have here is 25 grams of copper and 25 grams of aluminum. These two metals were put into test tubes and put into um, a hot water bath um, just to warm up in some boiling water. This water is at 100 degrees Celsius. The two test tubes, we have the same amount of substance of material in them, and they were both placed into the boiling water and left in there to heat up to the same temperature. So while the metals were heating up, we measured out um, 25 grams of water in each one of these two beakers and measured the temperature. Each temperature was at exactly 20 degrees Celsius. So now we have two test tubes, one different type of metal in each of these test tubes. One is copper, one is aluminum. Both heated up in a 100 degree water bath. 
and we have two beakers, both at 20 degrees Celsius, each containing the same amount of water, also the same substance. And we're going to see what happens. So we have the same mass of metals that are both at the same temperature. Same mass, same temperature. So these are the two factors, remember we talked about temperature first and then mass, that we said affected the amount of heat. When we dump these two metals into the beaker of water, one would assume that the temperature of the water would increase the same amount, right? We've got the same temperature, same mass, so of course. The only difference here is the substance. So let's just keep that in mind as we look at our results. Here are the results of this experiment. The copper started at 20 degrees Celsius, and the aluminum started at 20 degrees Celsius, the beaker of water, of course. At the end, the, the water with the copper added to it ended up at 26.7 degrees Celsius, making a 6.7 degrees Celsius difference. The water with aluminum added to it ended up at 34.1 degrees Celsius, or in other words, a 14.1 degrees Celsius jump. As you can see, the water which contained aluminum, which we added the aluminum to, increased in temperature by twice as much, just about. Very interesting. We had the same temperature, the same mass, different substances, and we notice a very big difference. So what does this mean? Aluminum caused about twice as much of an increase compared to copper. If we look at the graph again, remember we started with the same mass, the same temperature, the first two factors, but we ended with a different result. And this result must have had to do with the differing substances, aluminum versus copper. And what we call this is the specific heat capacity. Aluminum and copper have different specific heat capacities. And this is just the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Kind of a long definition, but it's really just referring to how much heat a certain substance can either hold onto or release. So in other words, aluminum increase the temperature of the water by twice as much as copper. So this means that aluminum has twice the capacity to hold onto or release heat. And this is displayed in aluminum and copper's specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity of aluminum is 0.21 calories per gram degree Celsius. The specific heat of copper is 0 0.092 calories per gram degree Celsius. You can see aluminum has about twice as much of a specific heat as copper. It has a higher specific heat which means it can hold on to more heat. Here's a table of specific heat capacities for a few different substances. If I were to ask you, which holds the least energy? Think about that for a second. Hopefully you would correlate this to the lowest specific heat. 
which when you look at the numbers here on the right, you'll see that gold has our lowest specific heat, meaning that it holds the least amount of energy. As we talked about in the last video, um, water has a very high specific heat, which has to do with the whole um, with the whole lake effect that happens with Lake Michigan in the fall and in the spring. Go back to that last video if you're not exactly sure what I'm talking about there. So to summarize, heat is comprised of three different fa factors, temperature, mass, and specific heat capacity. So hopefully this video proves to you the difference between temperature and heat Temperature is just one factor that we look at when talking about heat. So let's apply what we've learned and look at a couple of different questions. Question number one, sample X is water at 75 degrees Celsius and a mass of 50 grams. Sample Y is water at 75 degrees Celsius and a mass of 300 grams. Do the samples have the same temperature? When we're talking about temperature, you always want to think thermometer. So if we were to put a thermometer in sample X and sample Y, would they read the same temperature? Hopefully you're saying yes, they both read 75 degrees Celsius. They're at the same temperature. If we take the same scenario down to number two, do these samples in question one have the same heat? Why or why not? So hopefully you're thinking about the three factors that go into heat. One, temperature. Two, mass. And three, specific heat capacity. So we're at the same temperature in both of the samples, so we're good to go. Both of, both, both of the samples are made of water which covers our specific heat capacity because water, of course, we know, is going to have the same specific heat as water. What is differing here? We have a mass of 50 grams versus a mass of 300 grams. So since the masses are different, that means that the heats will also be different. Of course, we know that something with a higher mass is able to hold on to more heat. Lastly, I want to look at question number three. Sample A is 100 grams of gold at 50 degrees Celsius. Sample B is 100 grams of iron at 50 degrees Celsius. Which sample has more heat? So, in this question, we, we see that the masses are the same and the temperatures are the same. The only thing differing is the substance. And this is when we need to look to specific heat capacity. Gold has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.031 calories per grams degrees Celsius. And iron has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.11 calories per grams degrees Celsius. So we know that the masses are equal, the temperatures are equal. So this is really all we need to pay attention to, to determine which one has more heat. Since the iron has a higher specific heat than gold, this means that it's able to hold on to more heat. So therefore, we can come to the conclusion that iron has more heat than gold due to the specific heats. Hopefully this helped to clarify heat a bit more as well as the difference between temperature and heat. Have 